In aviation news, British Airways has announced it will launch flights between Gatwick and Las Vegas in October. The new route will operate three times a week from October in addition to its daily Heathrow service. German Wings is to add flights between Heathrow and Manchester to Stuttgart this winter. The carrier will commence the flights as part of its winter programme, which will see its Heathrow to Cologne-Bonn service continue. KLM is now offering a new seasonal service to Dallas Fort Worth International Airport in Texas. The new summer flights will operate five times a week. Caribbean Airlines is now operating direct flights from London Gatwick to Trinidad from this June. Qatar Airways has launched scheduled flights from Doha to the northern Iraq city of Erbil, taking the airline's global network to 115 destinations. Virgin Atlantic has launched a new London to Vancouver service. Flights will initially operate four times a week from London Heathrow to Vancouver throughout the summer up until the 27th of October. The British airline anticipates up to 40,000 passengers will travel on this new route in the first season. Here we are in Vancouver, a beautiful part of Canada on, on the west coast. And it's fantastic that Virgin Atlantic is now flying directly to Canada. We're starting by putting our toe in the water, doing four flights a week in the, in the summer months. If that goes well, I hope we'll be able to go up to daily. And if that goes well, I hope we'll be able to do that all year round as soon as possible. It feels amazing to be back here. I've not been back since my success in 2010. So I'm back here at the centre, I'm standing on the track. It kind of feels a bit strange, really. It's all a bit empty, and obviously last time I was here, it was the crazy Olympics. So, yeah, it's, I'm excited. It's a bit nerve-wracking, actually. <laughs> I think Vancouver is one of the wealthiest cities in the world. Uh, it's a city that uh, people love to visit. I mean, you know, fantastic restaurants and clubs. And, um, and then the countryside around Vancouver is to, is to die for. I mean, just spectacular. So. Every, every, every single sporting activity imaginable. It's just, I mean, look at it, it's incredible. You can come skiing here, you can do everything. And in the summer, there's loads of water sports, a very active, healthy sort of lifestyle. And Vancouver's an amazing city. So, you know, flying over now, whenever you want on Virgin, it's, it's an amazing city to come to, there's lots to do. I was lucky enough to go to the Vancouver Winter Olympics and I just happened to see Amy getting the gold. So just very, really, really fortunate to be there on that particular day. We are in Vancouver, this is the first ever Virgin flight to Vancouver, um, we're doing a little celebration for that and I'm so like, happy that I'm honoured that I can be here to perform for the event. Porter Air, the luxury business airline servicing 19 cities across Canada and the United States, has begun a new daily route between Washington DC and Toronto. With flights landing at the Toronto Island Airport, just 10 minutes from the downtown and Yorkville areas, they offer swift and direct access to the city's highlights. The future will soon be landing in Los Angeles International Airport, which is the sixth busiest airport in the world. Managing Director of LA World Airports, Mary Grady, explains why. If you haven't been to LAX in the last few years, uh, you might be a little surprised at what you see. LAX is definitely changing and it's changing for the better. We did a poll uh, about a year ago because we wanted to know what people in Los Angeles really thought about LAX. And most of the comments, well, people support the airport and they like their airport, they did say that it needed a bit of a facelift, and we are in Hollywood, and we do know how to do a good facelift in Hollywood, so we decided it was time for LAX to really improve, to modernize, and to you know, improve to the point where people choose LAX when they actually have a connecting flight or if they have to spend some time at an airport. So we knew we had to do quite a bit of work. So we decided about 25 major projects that were going to be done. We are currently spending over $4 billion and creating about 40,000 jobs, which is really a phenomenal thing to do during these tough economic times, putting people to work to build the future of not only LAX, but really the future of Los Angeles. LAX is the economic engine for the city of Los Angeles. One international flight a day 
basically pumps about $632 million into the city of LA economy. So international travel is extremely important for LAX. But it's hard to attract international travelers when you don't have an airport that people want to spend time at or even fly through. So as part of the $4.1 billion that are being spent, um, we are doing a number of things. I mentioned 25 projects. The crown jewel is, of course, our brand new Tom Bradley International Terminal. That alone, $1.5 billion. 18 gates, nine of those will be able to accommodate the big brand new generation aircraft like the Dreamliners and the A380s. This terminal is completely different than what people might have experienced at LAX before. What they did is they went out to the community and they said, when you think of Los Angeles, give us words, give us names, give us things that help us create an iconic building. And what everybody kept coming back to was the environment. And so Fentress Architects, the designer of the new terminal, created a building that makes you think of waves crashing on the ocean. And we are right on the Pacific. So that's why the design looks the way it does. But besides the curving roof, it also has glass, glass everywhere. So when you come to Los Angeles now and you get off that plane, the first thing you're going to see, the Hollywood sign and downtown Los Angeles and the mountains. And depending on what time of the year you come, snow covered mountains. So you'll arrive at the beach, you'll see snow-covered mountains, you'll see the Hollywood sign, and you'll feel welcome. And that's the goal. So that's the Tom Bradley Terminal. We're looking to open the first gate in September of 2012. The Great Hall, which is really the core of the building, will open along with the West Gates about springtime 2013, and then the remainder of it will open about the end of 2013, beginning of 2014. Now, I mentioned the Great Hall. The Great Hall is massive. Amazing retail, premium dining, premium retail. The experience just in the Great Hall itself, we're afraid people won't want to leave and get on their flights. It's going to be so nice. We're creating an environment and a feeling that when you're in that Great Hall, you feel like you're in Los Angeles. Uh, it's going to have something very iconic. People remember traveling through train stations. There's always that clock. We're putting a huge clock tower in so that people can use that clock tower as that place, that meeting place. We want people to really enjoy the experience at the airport because we know people are there for hours and we have to give them the kind of creature comforts that they need to be able to feel like it was a good experience. But that's just part of what's going on. That's some of what you see. What you don't see are things like the brand new central utility plant. That's not that exciting for most people, but if you think about it, we have to power this airport. We have to heat it. We have to cool it. The facility we had was 50 years old. It wouldn't be able to accommodate all of the new construction. So as we're building the terminal, we are building a brand new central utility plant worth almost $300 million. We're replacing 212 elevators and escalators. We've redone a number of the terminals. Terminal 5 has been redone. Terminal 6 is being redone. Terminal 3 is going to be redone. Those are the things you can see. But here's what you don't see and what will help people feel safer and they'll feel more comfortable about coming to LAX. Brand new, state of the art, with all the latest equipment, brand new fire station a brand new airport response coordination center. There has to be the brain to keep that airport going and operating. The planes keep landing, they keep taking off. Somebody has to operate all that. We have a brand new coordination response center that's doing all that. Also, on the uh, air side, you have new taxi lanes, new taxiways. Um, we've expanded some of the runways on the south side of the airport working with um, the FAA, the Federal uh, Aviation Administration, new uh, lighting systems on the runway to make it safer. So again, over four billion dollars of improvements in order to modernize and to make LAX a nicer place to visit. Your Alliance, the Express Coach Network, which operates in 25 countries throughout Europe, has added an additional day coach and ferry service from Dublin to Birmingham and London. 
The additional service will run until the 6th of September and will complement the International Coach Company's existing nighttime services. The additional Euroline service departs from Dublin at 7am and arrives in Birmingham City Centre at 3.30pm and London in the evening at 7. The crossing is on board one of the largest car ferries in the world, the Irish Ferries Ulysses. This increase in frequency is a reflection of the growing numbers using coach and ferry travel. The Ulysses is also the largest car ferry on the Irish Sea and truly impressive with lots to do on board. Passengers can upgrade to club class with a lounge to relax, enjoy complimentary snacks and drinks, have newspapers and Wi-Fi whilst enjoying panoramic sea views. For those wanting to relax or sleep, Onboard cabins are available in six cabin styles, including two bedroom suites. This year, P&O Cruises is celebrating 175 years of heritage. The company can trace its roots back to the foundation of the Peninsula Steam Navigation Company in 1837. With seven cruise ships operating from Southampton, the line offers cruises around the world tailored to British tastes. In celebration of this exciting milestone, all seven ships in the P&O Cruises fleet were together in their home port of Southampton on the same day. Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, reviewed the fleet. Well, we, uh, we were planning our programme back 18 months ago, uh, the programme for 2012, and we decided, well, it would be great to do something special for the 175th anniversary. And somebody said, well, what about having all the ships in together at the same time? And we all said, yes, lovely, and laughed. And then we thought about it, and the planning team got together, and they made it happen. So it's wonderful. In rail news, Rocky Mountaineer has announced it will introduce a new route from Seattle next summer. Named Coastal Passage, it will connect the city to Vancouver and the Canadian Rockies. This will be its fifth route. The new route from Seattle will give travellers who fly into the region or cruise to Alaska from the port more options and convenience to experience Western Canada by rail. The new route will be available in August 2030, both northbound and southbound, with stays on offer in Seattle, Vancouver, Banff or Jasper. At Universal Studios in California, the newest ride is now open. Transformers The Ride 3D will keep you gripped in your seats. The thrill ride takes you from city streets to the tops of buildings and was made with the help of creative consultant Michael Bay, the director who brought the Transformers to the big screen. Each car takes its passengers along 2,000 feet of track at perceived speeds of 60 miles an hour. 14 massive screens make the 3D images reach from floor to ceiling. Transformers The Ride. Well done, Freedom Fighters. It's wetsuits at the ready at the new Legoland in Florida. There's lots of splashes and slides waiting at the new water park. For Legoland Florida and for this destination, we've become more than a day trip now. We are more than a day, we are two days. Come to Legoland Florida, we're starting to build the resort positioning and we're really excited that tourists are gonna wanna stay here versus just coming here for the afternoon trip. The great thing and the key word for our park is it is a family-friendly park. So there's something for everybody. We start with the Duplo area, which is great for toddlers that are under three, maybe not that good at swimming, but it's a nice, safe area. Then we go to the wave pool, which is behind me, which is for any age. Then we have three slides towards the back of the park where you can go really fast or you can go in a tube and go down with your friends. And then we have the Joker Soaker area that can go for any age, 2 to 12, different slides, different things that you can do, full day experience there. And then our most unique feature is our builder raft. The Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas is currently under construction. Ali Putnam is Media and Community Relations Manager for Circuit of the Americas. Just highlights of the track in general, it's on about 375 acres. It's 3.4 miles long and has 20 turns. Um, the main seating areas right now uh, that we're selling personal seat licenses for are the main grandstand at the start finish, which will seat about 8,000 people. The grandstand up at turn one, and there's another grandstand in the uh, amphitheater area. 
Um, so those are kind of the most sought after seating areas right now. Um, beyond that, we'll also have seating throughout the facility as well as kind of general admission grass or berm seating that will allow people to walk around the track and experience different areas or different viewpoints. From start finish up to turn one is about 133 feet of elevation change. So turn one is one of the most sought after areas on the track as far as seating goes. Um, that's a pretty unique turn as far as our track is considered. Then there's a few other spots that have taken you know, ideas of turns from other uh, signature circuits around the world. For instance, turns three, four, and five are reminiscent of the Maggots Beckett sequence in Silverstone. And then we have a uh, triple apex turn around our Grand Plaza amphitheater area that is similar to Istanbul's turn eight. So I think, um, you know, new motorsports fans, new F1 fans will love it just because of the excitement of, of the track and that it will offer. Uh, but the, you know, serious motorsports and F1 fan will also be excited because they'll recognize turns from other races that they've been to around the world. For Austin, I mean, it's a huge tourist attraction for not only Austin, but the region as well. Um, this is so unique. And we expect, you know, 120,000 people to, to be at our facility um, on race day. So that's going to impact, you know, whether it's restaurants, hotels, all the, all the tourism industry. Um, as far as the state of Texas, they've uh, estimated that the race, Formula One race itself, will bring in about $250 million a year, 250 to $300 million a year economic impact. Um, and then, you know, just our company alone will produce hundreds and, and thousands of jobs, um, whether it's for construction or internally at our office, and then not to mention the other jobs that will be uh, seasonal or temporary jobs for the different events we'll have. Um, so this is a huge thing for Austin and for the region, for the state, and for the United States because it's a one-of-a-kind track and uh, it's the only one that, that exists in the country. Careers Day is another very important feature of the Arabian travel market. We have over 2,400 exhibiting companies from across the world at the show. And if you're looking to develop your career in tourism, come to the Arabian travel market and there'll be many, many opportunities. We as Millennium Cops on Hotels and Resorts recruited ATM because it's the place where you can see the applicants. The applicants can see us. We have our presence here at the stand. They can see who we are and we have the first contact and meet face to face. The caliber of applicants that we see here at ATM uh, in our recruitment or in the uh, introduction process varies to be very honest. You do have colleagues and general manager level or HR uh, department, head of department level coming and you see that with a various background of strong education from, from seminars. And some of them are being run here. Qatar National Hotels has rebranded to Qatar Hospitality and unveils plans to construct the five-star Lucelle Marine iconic development with towers designed in a spectacular crossed sword shape, accommodating a hotel, residence apartments and high-end restaurants. Located on the Gulf Coast, 15 kilometers north of Doha City, it is scheduled to be completed in 2016 in time for the World Cup. Movenpick Hotels and Resorts is opening two more properties in Dubai this year and will add to the group's existing hotels, the Ibn Battuta Gate and Oceana Beach Club. Jebel Ali International Hotels has revealed details of its new four-star property, scheduled to open for business at the end of the year. Located on the walk in the Jumeirah Beach residence area will be the only four-star beach property in Dubai. Opening later this year is Yaz Waterworld, Abu Dhabi's first water entertainment destination, featuring 43 rides, slides and attractions, as well as interactive games. Several of the technologically advanced rides boast world-first status, such as the world's largest surfable sheet wave and the first and longest hydromagnetic-powered tornado. The water park will complement other attractions in this entertainment hub, such as Yaz Marina Circuit, Yaz Links Golf Course and Ferrari World Abu Dhabi, which speeds ahead in 2012 with a new experiential ride, 
Viaggio in Italy, a new show production and more family-friendly activities. The water park will be a short drive away from both Abu Dhabi and Dubai, making it easily accessible from both gateway cities. If you are travelling to Paris and have an eye for fashion, visit the Louis Vuitton's exhibition, which runs until the 16th of September.